Today, we begin our discussions on the NHL draft, which is a little more than a month away. We'll talk today about some of the better picks at 13th overall, which is where the Islanders will be selecting this year. Plus, the most pleasant surprise on the Islanders roster this year will break down his season and his future with the Islanders. All that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. So glad you could join us today and be part of the Locked On Islanders family Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and that does include YouTube. So check us out and subscribe there so you can have all the latest episodes as soon as they come out. We've got a lot to discuss, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, a topic that you'd like us to discuss on the show, Feel free to send us an email, the email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles. And you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings and everything going on throughout what will be a very busy and critical offseason for the Islanders from the draft. Free agency, uh, we already covered the coaching situation, uh, trade rumors, you name it. If it's happening between now and the start of training camp, we'll be discussing it here on Locked on Islanders. So let's get started with the draft. And I have to give credit where credit is due. Got an email from Ian basically uh, asking for some information about the draft. And I was going to kind of get that started shortly, but, you know, Ian basically saying he's interested in some more draft stuff. So we'll start the draft discussions today. And between now and the draft, we will continue to discuss different aspects of the draft. Some of the prospects who are available, what the Islanders needs are a little bit about Lou Lamorello's tendencies and, what he tends to do in the draft, all of that we'll be talking about between now and the actual draft, which is coming up next month. But today, what we're going to do is look at some of the better 13th overall picks and discuss, you know, what kind of players were drafted 13th overall and, you know, what kind of an idea of what you can expect from the 13th overall pick. And, you know, there's a lot of very good players who have gone 13th overall. And let's start with the goalies. So two goalies that I'm going to mention who have been picked with the 13th overall selection. How about J.S. Jaguar? who was originally drafted by the Whalers back in 1995, but ended up really being a big part of the uh, Stanley Cup run by the Anaheim Ducks. And, you know, Jaguar only was with the Whalers organization for one year, then went to Calgary and then to Anaheim and look, you know, he, he was a guy who won the Conn Smythe Trophy back in 2003. And for his career, J.S. Jaguar with 597 games, a 2.53 goals against, and a 9.13 save percentage. That year in the playoffs uh, of 2003, his performance was just off the charts. And uh, deservedly, uh, he got that con Smythe. And, you know, you, you go back and you sort of look at it. Uh, you know, he, he did not win the cup that year. 
And yet he was so, so very good. Uh, you know, recorded three straight shutouts and five overall and got a, an undermanned Ducks team all the way to the Stanley Cup final where they actually fell to the New Jersey Devils. But, uh, you know, he took it to seven games and no way that the Ducks get even past the first round that year without the outstanding play of J.S. Jaguar. Uh, another goalie a little more recent, uh, Spencer Knight of the Florida Panthers. Uh, you know, he has so far only played in 58 NHL games, but he's a winner. 287 goals against average, winning practically two out of every three uh, games he plays, or at least point percentage, uh, two out of every three, a 661 career point percentage. And, you know, the thing about Knight is he is still very young. I mean, Spencer Knight is 21, just turned 21 in April, and uh, he was drafted back in 2019 by Florida, and he should be competing for that starting job. Uh, with the Panthers, if not next year, certainly the year after that. Now, on defense, how about a guy like Ron Hainsey? Hainsey, uh, drafted by the Montreal Canadiens back in 2000, played in 1,132 NHL games, and that is an impressive career. And, you know, played all the way through the 2020 season 2019-2020 put together you know more of a defensive defenseman only 59 goals 311 points but a 17 year NHL career and really a steady big uh defenseman that every NHL team could use now again goaltending not the Islanders top need uh, a defensive defenseman not the Islanders top need but again, these are the kind of players who you can get with this kind of pick. Now, another good defenseman uh, going further back, Phil Russell, who was uh, with the Chicago Blackhawks, drafted in 72. He scored 99 goals and 424 points in 1,016 games. And, you know, Phil Russell, again, uh, if you're old enough to remember, you know, played in the NHL from 72, 73 at the age of 20, all the way to through the 86, 87 season. And, you know, one goal short of 100, a very physical player, topped 200 penalty minutes twice, 100 penalty minutes many other times. And, you know, is one of those guys that if he was on your team, and in addition to the Blackhawks, he played for the Atlanta Flames, Calgary Flames, the Devils, and the Sabres, you know, he was the kind of guy that was strong, would protect his teammates, and was good in his own zone. If you're thinking more along the lines of an offensive defenseman, think about Derek Morris. Derek Morris, uh, a right-handed shooting defenseman drafted by the Flames back in 1996, a year later, made his debut and, you know, had a 48-point season. Uh, 11 goals, 37 assists in 2002-2003 with Colorado. And, you know, finished with 424 points in those 1,107 uh, NHL games. Derek Morris, also one of the uh, 13th overall picks. Now, you're asking me, how about forwards? Well, if you're looking for more of a playmaker, Craig Janney. Uh, was drafted with a 13th overall pick by the Boston Bruins uh, back in 1986. And Janney played for the Bruins, the Blues, the Sharks, the Jets, uh, the Coyotes, the Lightning, and yeah, briefly, uh, for 18 games at the end of his career, with the New York Islanders. So there's an Islanders connection there, former Boston College star, 188 goals, 751 points uh, in 760 career NHL games for Craig Janney. And, you know, Janney, one of those guys who was a lady bing 
type of guy, finished as high as fourth in the Lady Bing uh, voting and never really had more than 26 penalty minutes in a season. So, uh, you know, Craig Janney, a setup guy and very good one at that. One more uh, player we're going to talk about, Dustin Brown. Drafted by the LA Kings with the 13th overall pick uh, back in 2003. Brown still active this year at the age of uh, 37. And the Ithaca, New York native has been with the Kings since 2003-2004. Played in almost 1,300 NHL games, 325 career goals, including 33 back in 2007-2008, uh, won the Marc Messier Award uh, in 2013-2014, and is a two-time Stanley Cup winner. So there is reason for hope when you look at the 13th overall pick, and hopefully this gives a sort of whets your appetite for what the Islanders might be able to uh, select using this pick. Keep in mind, with NHL drafts, you're talking about two, three, sometimes four years away before most of these players make the NHL and begin to have an impact. We've got more to discuss on today's show when we come back. We'll talk about the Islanders player who was the biggest positive surprise on the team all year. We'll talk about his season and his future with the team, all that and more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more from the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and they have everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even a new carpet. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Fox? So they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. We have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On podcasts. So go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. uh, To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey, and thank you for your help. So let's discuss the player who, in my mind, was the most pleasant surprise for the Islanders this year, and to me by far. That means Noah Dobson. Dobson, uh, very much in his third season in the NHL, but blew out, uh, you know, blew past what he was doing in his first two years. This year in 80 games, 13 goals, 51 points. He was a minus three plus minus, only 18 penalty minutes all year. Three of his 13 goals came on the power play, as did 19 of his 38 assists. He is right now the quarterback of the Islanders power play. He is the only player on the blue line who I would consider a solid skater and the kind of player who can um, move the puck quickly and consistently. And he's probably the best passer uh, among all of the Islanders blue liners as of now. Make no mistake about it, at 6'4", 195 pounds, uh, Dobson still has some things to work on. His play in his own zone, while getting significantly better, still needs a little improvement. But offensively, he is really blossoming, and that is so encouraging. 
He's only 22 years old, and you know that his future is bright. He averaged 21 and a half minutes per game of ice time, and I only get the feeling that as the seasons go on, like next year, Noah Dobson is going to get even more ice time uh, because he is by far right now the player that can best fill the role that uh, of the offensive defenseman. He's not afraid to block shots, blocked almost two per game, 154 this year, and only 78 hits in 80 games. But let's face it, physicality is not the centerpiece of Noah Dobson's game at this stage in his career, uh, and it probably won't ever be. No doubt that Dobson learned a lot this year because of the presence of Zdeno Chara. And you can say what you want about Chara not being the right guy, <clears throat> excuse me, to replace Nick Letty. And I don't think he was. I, I, I think he was, if you kept Andy Green, you didn't need Zdeno Chara. But Chara acted like a big brother slash player coach for Noah Dobson. And there is no doubt in my mind that being around Chara, being paired with Chara for large portions of the season and seeing what Zdeno Chara does, whether it's how he practices, how he prepares for a game, how he handles his teammates and the officials and the opposing players, and just learning from the experience of a future Hall of Famer and a, and a captain of a Stanley Cup team like Zdeno Chara was invaluable to Noah Dobson. And maybe he doesn't have that breakout season like he did this year until next year or maybe even the year after if he wasn't exposed to Zdeno Chara and probably to a lesser extent Andy Green, who helped develop his game and speed up his progress. How Lane Lambert may use him differently, I think that's a little bit up in the air, but I don't anticipate much of a change. If anything, the only thing I see is a little more ice time and maybe without a doubt, unless the Islanders go out and get a, an elite puck moving offensive defenseman this off season, Dobson will remain the number one offensive defenseman and number one power play defenseman on this Islanders team. And the scary thing for opposing teams, but the great thing for Islander fans, Noah Dobson can still get better. And, you know, right now he's 22. Give him another year, maybe two years at, uh, you know, on the blue line with the Islanders, maybe allow him to grow into his body a little more, get a little stronger uh, and get a little more experience. And Noah Dobson could be an all-star, could be uh, a player where you put together a blue line that features Ryan Pulak, Adam Pellick, and Noah Dobson. Maybe Robin Sallow eventually joins that threesome, but overall, you start with those three. That is three excellent pieces to an elite defense core. Now, you know, Scotty Mayfield, solid. Uh, Robin Sallow, potential. But, uh, you know, got to add. Don't know if Andy Green or Zidane Ochara are going to be back, but Noah Dobson gives the Islanders the potential to have three really, really good, if not great, defensemen on their roster at the same time. And that is one of the keys to success in the National Hockey League. So uh, Noah Dobson, to me, the most improved player on the Islanders this year the biggest surprise in a positive way for the Islanders this year. And realistically, uh, I'm not going to say he was the team's MVP, but if you're going to look at the MVP, I would have to put him in the top three or four for sure uh, when considering that. So uh, great season for Noah Dobson, becoming the first Islander defenseman to top 50 points since Mark Streit a decade ago, or more than a decade ago. And Dobson uh, only getting started with regard to his NHL career. We have got more to get to on today's show when we come back. 
We have our Islanders' birthday of the day, a forward from Sweden who played for the Islanders in the mid-2000s. See if you can guess who that is. All that plus more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs. Hey, the conference finals have started now in the Stanley Cup playoffs. You got Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next year's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. Today, June 1st, is the 42nd birthday of former Islanders forward Matthias Wienhandel. Wienhandel, as uh, we Americanized the name too, uh, Drafted by the Islanders in the third round back in 1999. Played in the Swedish Elite League for a few seasons before joining the Islanders in 2002-2003. Played 47 games that year, 6 goals, 23 points. The following year, 55 games, 8 goals, 20 points. And then uh, in 2005-2006, 53 more games with the Islanders, 2 goals, 6 points. And then he was traded to the Minnesota Wild, spent part of two seasons there and then headed back to Sweden and the KHL uh, where he finished his career. Wienhandel played in 182 games, 19 goals, 56 points, 70 penalty minutes, played in five playoff games, all with the Islanders, and had two penalty minutes in those games. We're going to take you back to one of his better performances with the Islanders, February 27th. 2004 at the HSBC Arena in Buffalo. Rick DiPietro, the goalie for the Islanders against Martin Biron of the Sabres. And it was the Islanders scoring first. Marius Tchaikovsky is 23rd from our Islanders' birthday of the day, Matthias Wienhandel and Oleg Kavasha. Time of the goal, 14.02. Islanders up 1-0 after one period. In the second, the Sabres tie it in the first minute. Chris Jewry, his 14th from Taylor Pyatt and J.P. Dumont, 59 seconds in. We're even at 1-1. One and one. But then Roman Hammerlick gives the Islanders back the lead at the 13-01 mark. His third from Eric Manlo and Dave Scatchard. Islanders up by 1-2-1. One, one. With Rory Fitzpatrick of the Sabres off for interference, our Islanders' birthday of the day, Matthias Wienhandel, his seventh. Yanni Ninema and Oleg Kavasha assisting on the power play goal at 1645. And the Islanders had a 3-1 to one lead. But then Jason Blake heads off for hooking. And J.P. Dumont of Buffalo makes it 3-2. to two. His power play goal is 16th from Dimitri Kalanen and Chris Drury. Islanders clinging to a 3-2 to two lead after 40 minutes. But in the third... Oleg Kavasha puts it away for the Islanders, his 13th from Kenny Janssen and Marius Tchaikovsky at 635. The Islanders defeat the Sabres by a score of 4-2. to Rick DiPietro, 42 saves as the Islanders were outshot 44-25. to But for our Islanders' birthday of the day, Matthias Wienhandel, who was a great two-way uh, defense first kind of a forward, he had a goal and an assist. He was a plus one. His goal uh, came on the power play. It was the game winner, and it came in his only shot on goal in the game. He only played 11 minutes and 19 seconds, but was very productive in this one. And we wish him today a very happy 42nd birthday. Wien Handel last played professional hockey in 2012-2013 in the Swedish Elite League. So I'll tell you the draft. It is something that I am excited about, and we here at Locked On will have you covered. I will start talking about some of the players the Islanders may be targeting, some of the tendencies that Lou Lamarillo has in the draft, and we can go back not just to his time with the Islanders, but his time with the Maple Leafs and with the Devils. And uh, 
we will also have some le uh, league-wide looks at the draft from the Locked On Network as our local experts about all 32 teams. We'll be doing a mock draft, and we'll be discussing all the team's possible picks. Uh, so make sure you check that out, and we'll have more information for you when that becomes available. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. And I do host the Monday show and co-host the Friday edition. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.